Good evening. My name is Jessica Hubble, and this is Anthony Nor Norega uh, with the College of Psychology, the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, as well as the Mailman Siegel Center for Human Development. It is a sincere pleasure to be with you this evening. Um, and we definitely want to thank each and every one of you for joining us for this doctoral information session, which is provided to you virtually. Uh, today, our hope is to, of course, um, educate you a little bit more, uh, inform you uh, more on our doctoral programs. So please uh, uh, enjoy the presentation we have provided for you today. And also, we welcome you to uh, ask any questions that you may have. All you got to do is just type in your question, and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. Please note that this uh, presentation is being recorded. Um, so if anything you may have missed or want to uh, kind of uh, clarify, you're more than welcome to go back and uh, see the recording of this presentation. So once again, on behalf of the faculty and staff of all our colleges that we work with, it is a sincere joy to have each and every one of you join us today. And with that, we will begin our presentation. Uh, once again, please feel free to share any questions uh, that you, you may have throughout our presentation. So with Nova Southeastern University, we are located here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, and this presentation will once again cover the programs for the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, as well as the College of Psychology. On today's agenda, just to kind of give you a rough overview of the agenda today, uh, I will be covering the college overview. So highlighting accreditation, academic highlights, faculty program interview, uh, or excuse me, program overview. And my colleague, Jessica, will be uh, handling the graduate information side of it. So we'll be discussing with you certification, licensure, um, admissions, tuition, and of course, me and Jessica both will be answering uh, any questions that you may have. Uh, through this presentation. So some of the NSU highlights. Uh, without further ado, this is uh, some highlights that we take as a university, take a lot of pride in. Uh, first and foremost, that is our accreditation. As a university, we are accredited through the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commission on Colleges. Um, the reason for this is that recently the university, NSU, reaffirmed regional accreditation for another 10 years. So what does this mean? It means that NSU was found to be in complete compliance with no findings or recommendations for the first time in the university's history. So I believe it is safe to say we essentially almost came out perfect in our accreditation, which we're very proud in, um, in our academics, and of course, within our student development uh, oversee and ensuring that our students are successful. The other thing that we take sharp pride in is we are ranked in the top 200 by the U.S. News and World Report. We actually climbed seven slots in the U.S. News and World Report Best Colleges, making us number 191. And we could not have done this uh, without the success of our students, uh, students first, as well as the determination and commitment from our president, President George Henberry, as well as the administration, faculty, and staff of this great institution. Some other items going on on our campus uh, that is not essentially related to the uh, colleges that we will be discussing or receive today, and that is that NSU received $200 million commitment from the Patel Family Foundation. And what this um, uh, donation uh, goes towards is towards our health professions, our medical area within NSU, thus making NSU's new MD college, which we received preliminary accreditation for. The other item regarding our generous donation uh, from the Patel family, and then of course launching our MD area is that we welcomed, NSU welcomed our inaugural class of 53 MD students making NSU one of only three universities with both a DO and MD programs. So this is something we definitely take a lot of pride in, thus making more NSU Shark Pride. 
But what's happening within our colleges? Uh, first, within our College of Psychology, uh, for those of you who are very familiar with the American Psychological Association, the APA conference, which was held in San Francisco this past year, uh, we were recognized with the 2018 Richard M. Sonnen Minority Achievement Award. It was based on student nominations, recognizes programs that demonstrate a commitment to recruiting, training, and graduate students of color. And this, this goes to show that we open our doors to all students, we welcome all students, and we're very, very proud of this prestigious award. Another award that was uh, recognized at the APA conference in San Francisco was the Division 16th Jack Barden Distinguished Service Award, which went to our very own Dr. Jean Cash, pictured here. Dr. Cash was recognized for leadership and contributions to the field of school psychology, research that has advanced the field or the development of new training programs for school psychologists. So our sincere congratulations goes out to our own Dr. Jean Cash. Within our College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, specifically our uh, program of in uh, composition, rhetoric, and digital media, these two students were recognized at the SWCA Graduate Tutors Award uh, from the S Southeastern Writing As uh, Center Association. These students were recognized for their hard work and uh, uh, contributing efforts uh, towards our writing center right here on NSU's campus. So congratulations to both of them. Finns football, no, uh, Nova Southeastern University uh, does not have a football team. However, we do have a very close working relationship with the Miami Dolphins football team, which is the professional NFL, the National Football League uh, professional football team located right here in our backyard. It is through the Miami Dolphins football team that students learn uh, not only about the partnership but yes, get free tickets to the games, home games, but they also will enhance um, for academic reasons. They will work closely with the Miami Dolphins, specifically through uh, athletic, psych uh, athletic uh, training, uh, uh, sports psychology, et cetera. And so we're very grateful for the Miami Dolphins and their sincere partnership. So moving on to our next uh, item of agenda, and that's the college overview, or college's overview, rather, um, and that we want to highlight our accreditation. So therefore, falling within our academic achievements. Once again, we are accredited through the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commission on Colleges, which essentially means that NSU is, does award uh, degrees, bachelor degrees, master degrees, doctoral degrees, and law degree. Uh, we are accredited through the American Psychological Association, APA, which I'm going to highlight a little bit later on. And then, of course, there are other uh, program-specific accreditation varies. And, of course, you can find all the accreditations on our website. Some additional uh, academic highlights uh, that I want to, of course, uh, share with you through our College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences is that we we offer one of the few doctoral programs in conflict analysis and resolution across North America. This is a very unique program, uh, which you'll get to see momentarily. Also, NSU's family therapy programs. For those of you who are interested in, in our uh, doctorate of marriage and family therapy or our PhD, um, we offer a 95% job placement rate um, from our family therapy program. Within our College of Psychology programs, once again, cl our clinical and school doctoral programs are accredited by APA. This includes our internship program, which is, of course, very reputable, very prestigious. Um, and I think you're pretty much, not to be biased, but you have made a wise choice in considering our, our programs. Additionally, uh, within both colleges, uh, we have a faculty mentorship in small classes. What does this mean? Yes, we are a private institution, but we are uh, a private institution that offers that one-on-one -on -one, uh, dedication and attention to our students. Others uh, highlights we want to highlight is community-centered services, programs, and activities, our independent research, study abroad, publication, and creative expression, 
and of course our competitive edge immersing students in real world professional situation through our psychology clinics. This is something that, that of course, just like our academics, uh, we also take pride in, in our clinics. We have uh, quite a few clinics on our campus, um, which uh, Jessica will highlight in her section uh, in momentarily, but our clinics also are a focal point of our institution, and that is, that is us reaching out to the community, and it is our students gaining that, that, that experience through our clinics with their work with the community. And of course, our graduate programs do lead to licensure, certification, or broader experience. So how does this all come about? Well, that is towards our dedication from our faculty who are distinguished in their fields and of course have, have worked in these areas of wherever they may teach in and pass that experience, pass that knowledge on to our students. For example, uh, just to highlight a couple of our faculty, we have Dr. Scott Poland within our College of Psychology. Dr. Poland is a nationally recognized expert on school crisis, youth violence, suicide intervention, self-injury, school safety, threat assessment, and of course the list goes on and on. But Dr. Poland has lectured and written extensively on these subjects. He has appeared on all major television network news programs and has presented over 1,000 workshops in every state and numerous foreign countries. So he, he, he brings that experience to Nova Southeastern University and of course uh, to our students. Towards our College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, specifically our conflict analysis and resolution, we have Dr. Claire, uh, Dr. Claire Michelle Rice. Now, Dr. Rice not only chairs the department, but she serves as an educator at various uh, other institutions in higher ed um, in research activities that have focused on conflict resolution training, community organization, group dynamics, poverty, economic empowerment, diversity training, and of course, the list goes on for her as well. Um, however, Dr. Rice has numerous experience within several areas for uh, human research and community development. And of course, she spring, brings that expertise uh, to our program. So students, you are in great hands with our faculty. That is essentially a guarantee from us. So within our College of Arts and Humanities and Social Sciences, uh, aside from our doctoral programs, which you will see uh, momentarily, we want to, of course, remind you of our master degree programs. As you can see, we offer the MA, the Master of Arts, as well as the MS, Master of Science, in various areas from cross-disciplinary studies uh, to composition, rhetoric, and digital media to our family therapy and, of course, national security affairs and international relations. So perhaps, yes, you may be here to oversee or look rather at our doctoral programs, but we definitely want to remind you of our master's degree programs. Within the College Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, as mentioned, we have our very unique uh, PhD program within the Conflict Analysis and Resolution, as well as our PhD and DMFT within the Family Therapy. Uh, both or all degrees, very reputable, very unique in itself, and of course, hands-on experience in all areas within our doctoral programs. We also offer graduate certificates uh, within the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. Uh, anywhere, as you can see, from advanced conflict resolution practice to solution-focused coaching, peace studies, family studies, of course, the list goes on. So if you are interested in a graduate certificate, of course, you would need to uh, go through that application process, which we'll talk about um, in, just, in just a few minutes. College of Psychology, I want to highlight some of our master's degree programs within the College of Psychology. Uh, we do offer the MS in Counseling as well as the MS in Experimental, Forensic, and General Psychology. We do offer the specialists, we do have a specialist program, the SIS, in school psychology. And kind of jumping back to our counseling, you see five concentrations alone within our counseling degree program. In our doctoral degrees overall, we offer the PhD and the PsyD in clinical psychology. PsyD stands for, of course, doctorate in psychology. And then we offer the PsyD in school psychology. Once again, I want to highlight APA accreditation. 
very reputable uh, to get in. And yes, it is competitive to get in as well, which once again, Jessica will discuss uh, shortly here as far as the admissions process goes to get into our programs. And with that, I would like to turn it over to Jessica uh, to review our graduate information. Jessica. Thank you so much, Anthony, and for going through our prestigious university. Um, I'm sure everybody's really excited about this next section. Uh, once again, my name is Jessica Hubble. I'm the Assistant Director for the Department of Recruitment and Admissions. You more than likely have spoken to me once or twice uh, via email or over the phone. So let us begin. Uh, certification and licensure. Um, with the majority of our programs, uh, you will have the opportunity for practicum and internship. Uh, most of our students work uh, for facilities within our university during the practicum uh, and some of the portion of their internship because we do have the Brief Therapy Institute for the Marriage and Family Therapy section. We have the Psychological Services Center downstairs um, from the Maltz building. Um, for our psychology uh, programs like clinical psychology. Um, other than that, you can go outside of the university for uh, other facilities, um, especially in your last year of the clinical psychology program. Um, you'd have to you know, apply for internships at different facilities. Uh, during that time for the clinical psychology program, uh, you can get paid. Those pay may vary. Uh, so it just really depends on where you get your internship at. Now, research opportunities are of plenty here at Nova Southeastern University. We do have the Center for Collaborative Research. Um, that is, if you've ever driven by our university, it's the Blue Dome Building. Uh, in that building, they do all kinds of different uh, research um, from stem cell research to behavioral disorders, autism, problem drinking. Um, within our Psychology Services Center, they do offer uh, Diabolical Behavioral Therapy, DBT. Um, they also do one-on-one. -on -one. They offer uh, anxiety treatment, family violence, um, trauma, and of course more. Our Brief Therapy uh, Institute, they assist in family dynamics, um, parenting skills, better communication. Um, and our Mailman Siegel Center, they have the Early Childhood uh, institute they have uh, for autism they have uh, clinical programs and also more many of our students actually will um, assist at the mailman Siegel for uh, additional assistance um, within their programs and to get more hands-on experience now the admissions process uh, the dreaded admissions process that everybody always fears it's not so bad it truly is not um, Obviously, you want to make sure that all of your application documents are in uh, after completing your application in itself. There is the $50 application fee. Um, once you finish your application, you should be able to upload your documents um, to your application in itself. Depending on the program would depend on how many documents um, are necessary. Uh, for instance, the clinical psychology program, you'll need three letters of recommendation. Uh, the GRE score of uh, the APA requires 297. Uh, but to be honest with you, we do look for 300 or higher. Um, so those are just some examples. Um, as you can see, the application deadlines are located here on the screen for, for those doctoral programs uh, within uh, the College of Psychology. Now, the PsyD in school psychology does have the January 8th as well as the June 30th um, 2019 uh, deadline. Now, that is dependent on if the cohort is full, um, so it may be sooner than that. So never postpone um, admitting yourself into the program with your application and your supplemental documents. Remember, we in the Department of Recruitment and Admissions are here for you. So please feel free. Give us a call. Email us. We want to make sure that you're in the right program and that you're getting the right information. Now, as far as tuition goes, um, as you can see from the screen, the master's degree is $755 per credit hour, uh, doctoral degree $1,110 uh, per credit hour in the psychology department, and the doctoral degrees in the arts, humanities, and social sciences is $1,095. Uh, the school specialist um, 
school psychology program is 820. Graduate certificates are the same as the master's degree programs, and there are additional fees. Now, many people do fear financial aid. Um, once you are admitted into the program and accepted, you'll be able to work with financial aid. Um, undergraduate versus graduate school are different, so you do have a different allowance for graduate school. Uh, we will, our financial aid department will assist you with that, and our website does have additional information as far as um, different things that may be available within the university. You can also go to the fafsa.gov or fafsa.ed.gov website to see what type of scholarships may be available outside of the university and through the government. And then, of course, there's other scholarship options out there. I know even my last name. Um, being Hubble, I can actually get a scholarship just because my last name. So there's all kinds of different things out there. So just search um, and you shall seek. <laughs> um, obviously, we will be uh, having a lot of questions. So please feel free and write in right now uh, any questions that you may have specifically to the program. And I'll be more than happy to answer those questions uh, for you. Um, with that, I do want to just leave our contact information here for you so you can jot that down. That is um, the email address for us, so it will be received by myself or um, my graduate assistants, and that is our direct line. Um, so you can go ahead and uh, jot that phone number down with any additional questions. Uh, at this time, does anybody have any questions that may be program specific? Okay, we have a couple of questions that have come through. And one question asks um, for the PhD, uh, I guess for our PhD program within clinical psychology, is there financial aid for research assistance or teacher assistance? That's a great question. Um, and, and the answer to that is, is, is yes. Uh, there are uh, graduate assistantships available within uh, the programs. However, uh, just like almost anything, they, they, there are limitations. There are limits to positions available. Uh, just because, as we all know, current students are, with, are within, are holding those positions now. So just depending on when they're finishing their own program, when, um, uh, when well, essentially that's it, <laughs> when they're gonna be completing their program and of course graduating, that will, of course, open up uh, those positions. So there are limits uh, to that. That, of course, is, is, is if there is one available, um, it's just like any other job, kind of I have to apply right. for it and then approach uh, that department and faculty member uh, to, to get more information and, and seek uh, employment with that. Absolutely. Um, I hope that did answer your question. Uh, we do have graduate assistants within the College of Psychology and the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. And depending on the faculty uh, within the university, you know, they may have their own graduate assistants. So there's a lot of different opportunities. Once you are a student, you'll be able to access Job X, which will actually have those on there. When you are filling out your financial aid, you're going to want to make sure that you check mark that you are interested in work study and graduate assistant positions within the university to be able to actually apply for those positions. Um, Brett asked, uh, what is the nature of the dissertations for the clinical programs? Are they publication ready or are they standard? It depends on whether or not you're doing the PhD or the PsyD program. So the PhD, it is going to be research based. So you'll have basically your clinical aspects and you'll have to keep pace with that. And then you'll have your dissertation portion where you'll be adding uh, to the body of knowledge um, that is already out there, hopefully uh, helping and, and demonstrating new implementations of, of different um, approaches for clients. 
so it just really depends. And you can do it more as like a um, study with your with clients, or you can do it more in a research uh, type of aspect doing like surveys. So it just really depends. Um, the PsyD is more like a directed study. So it's more like a capstone in a way. Um, the it, It's not going to be as uh, entailed as the PhD because it is more clinical based, not so much research based. Uh, Natalie asks, uh, as far as the PhD for psychology, is there financial aid for research assistant and teacher assistant? You already asked that one. I'm sorry, I jumped around. Um, Jamila, would you need a master's for the terminal family and marriage doctorate? The, yes, um, the marriage and family therapy programs, you do need a master's degree to get into the doctoral program. However, the College of Psychology, uh, you do not need a master's degree because you're going to be earning it in the program. And the reasoning why is because of APA accreditation. Uh, an APA accredited program is at the doctorate level. So there's, if you're doing master courses, those aren't APA accredited. So we don't offer the master's program or accept programs outside of the university that is a master's in clinical because they're not going to be APA accredited. And our program is, which is prestigious, um, especially within the state of Florida because you cannot become a clinical psychologist without being graduated from an APA accredited program. Speaking of APA, I just want to make a side note. The school psychology doctoral program is APA accredited. You do sit for the same licensure as the clinical psychology program. If you are interested of dealing with students from K through 12, um, definitely want to look at that program as well. It is a fabulous program and you have a wonderful group of faculty that actually are some of the first respondents for different things that happen in our local community because we are a very community enriched university. Um, Marta asks, what is the duration of the doctoral programs and what are the hours on campus per week? Uh, depends on which program you're speaking of. So our College of Psychology classes programs um, for the doctoral are five-year programs, both the clinical psychology and the school psychology. Four years on campus, your last year is going to be the internship portion where you'll have to apply and get accepted into an internship position. Now, the marriage and family therapy program in total, it's going to be around five to six years for the master's and the doctoral, and it depends on if it's the DMFT, which is the Doctor of Marriage and Family Therapy, or if it is the PhD in Marriage uh, and Family Therapy. So um, it just really kind of depends. And if you're, and then the other uh, doctoral program uh, the so, is analysis. the Conflict Analysis yeah. and Resolution. Um, it Once again, it depends because that, that program for the PhD in conflict analysis and resolution is offered in both residential and distant learning formats. So uh, what that means is online or on campus. Uh, so it, it really just depends on, on what you're interested in. And as Jessica highlighted, you know, the, the program that uh, d depending on, on what program being that there's different program formats for the, P the doctoral programs. And what your accessibility is too, because the doctoral programs for the clinical and school psychology programs are nine to four weekdays. If you can't do that, then you might want to look at an alternative like marriage and family therapy, which have uh, more nights uh, options. Um, or the conflict analysis and resolution, which offers it online. So it just really depends on what is your going to be your best fit. And uh, kind of jumping back to the because um, it was brought up again on regarding um, TAs, graduate assistantships, how many students apply, how many are offered interviews and how many are given offers. Uh, great line of questions. Uh, but but once again, I mean, we have a lot of students, if not almost every single applicant that um, inquires about graduate assistantships uh, and, you know, the nature of the work, how many are, how many positions are offered, um, et cetera. So once again, it, it it's it's really hard to give you a specific um, hard specific answer to as far as how many students apply and offered. It just all depends on how many positions are available. 
And if you're speaking more about as far as interviews for the doctoral program to getting into the program, um, you know, they try not to limit themselves. Um, what I've seen, at least from this last fall start, for the PhD in clinical psychology, about one in 16 students got into that. For the PsyD in clinical psychology, it was one in four. Now with the school psychology PsyD program, it was more like one in two students. So it just really depends on what we're looking for and how many faculty versus students we can accept. Now, the PhD program, on average, we accept anywhere between eight and 12 students, and it also depends on what type of research opportunities are available for those students. The PsyD, it's more like 80 to 85 students, um, sometimes more, depending on how, what our applicants are like. Um, so it, it just really depends on those specifics. Uh, and what kind of options we have for our students. Um, when it comes to the interview, they look at your whole profile. So if they have multiple students that are above the quota for um, students that we want to get into the program, they're going to get more information through interview. So, you know, let's say the PsyD and clinical psychology um, specifically, uh, if it's one in four students, they might have three-fourths of those students come in for interview because it's just so close as far as GPA, their, their writing ability, um, their letters of recommendation, their previous experience. It just might be too close for them to tell. So that interview day really gives us an idea on what the, these students you know, are contributing and what they can do in this program and where they're going to go. Because ultimately, you will be a product of the university, and we want to make sure that you're going to be above par. Um, let's see here. So, uh, Sierra, how is the clinical neuropsychology program? Can students specialize in neuropsychology their first year of the PhD program? Wonderful question. Uh, the neuropsychology, and I actually know a lot about this because I uh, know Dr. Golden. Dr. Golden is actually uh, head up in the neuropsychology. He was actually one of the first in the field. People laughed at him when he decided to get into this area. He has informed me that when it comes to people that are interested in the neuropsychology field, he lets them in as long as, of course, they got accepted into the program. So if their interest does lie in that, then he lets them in because a lot of the time, about half the students and up not wanting to stay in that program because they realize that it's really not for them because in neuropsychology there is no room for failure so that's definitely something to to consider and it, you will start that kind of in your first year you don't have to pick a specialization whatsoever uh, if you know right from the beginning absolutely want to talk to your program manager so you can start working on those classes especially with the neuropsychology because there are additional courses that you'll be taking in that field um, Rachel, uh, you applied for the PhD program in clinical psych. Uh, list of the items. Okay, so I've had a lot of questions about the psychology and stati the statistic credit hours. Now, part of your application, there should have been an, an area where you can actually list those courses and how many credit hours they were. Now, if there wasn't, or if you missed it, or whatever the case may be, it may take them longer to actually check mark that it has been met. And the reasoning why is because an individual has to personally go into your transcripts and see whether or not those um, classes actually meet the criteria necessary for those IT 18 uh, psychology credits. Um, if, you, if it's been longer than two weeks uh, since like you got the check mark for the official transcripts or your transcripts being received, definitely give us a call. Um, I'll send you over to the admissions department or I'll jot your name down and they'll take a gander so that way they can update that information for you. Um, we do get a, a tremendous amount of uh, students that are interested in the program. So um, sometimes, you know, we it, things get bypassed as far as check marking those different documents, but we do physically check mark them. So your application shows it up. So please bear with us because an actual individual does look at it, all of that information. Um, Brett asks, what internship sites have the students of clinical psychology gone to? Um, there's a lot of different facilities that our students have gone to. Um, 
we're, we actually have a facilitator that assists students with their sites. Uh, they have the list. I do not. I have not seen the list. Um, I do know that we have uh, facilities up in Maryland um, that always look for our students, as um, surprisingly as that may be. Um, but yeah, so it, it just really depends on what is local, where you're looking to go, um, if you're trying to do new experiences. I mean, NSU has been around for quite a while now, and they are prestigious, and people do actively seek our students. So there's a lot of different opportunities you will receive. Um, how strict is the two-page limit for the personal statement for the PsyD clinical psychology program? Well, first of all, we want to make sure it's an APA format, uh, double space. Uh, they say 500 to 1,000 words, I believe it's documented online. Um, so you want to make sure that, you know, you are talking about things that you enjoy, your subject matter of specialization that you have interest in, um, different experiences that you had either within the clinical aspects or research aspects. These are all different things that are really going to, like, make you shine. Um, so definitely want to talk about yourself as, pos as much as possible and really sell yourself to the committee. Um, the outlook for neuropsychologists, uh, honestly, I, I do not have any statistics as far as that goes. I know that there's not many neuropsychology programs out there, uh, and neuropsychology is basically needed whenever, wherever there's a uh, neuro neurologist. Um, so, I mean, pretty much any neurologist facility usually needs a neuropsychologist uh, on staffs to be able to do those type of assessments. Um, so I, I would think that it would that information would be online. Uh, if you'd like, we can always come back to you and see if after speaking to Dr. Golden, um, what that might look like as far as uh, the outlook from his previous students. Are there any other questions or anything that you might need more information or details about? For the access for military populations, wonderful question. Um, we actually do have working relationships um, because it is an APA accredited program. Um, actually, where we are sitting is actually one of our, our our cohorts and she's in the doctor of marriage family therapy and she is doing specifically on um women in the military so it really you know if you reach out and you show them the research um i wouldn't see why you'd have any difficulties especially from uh nsu uh, interview day um be yourself 100 percent um be who you are, show that passion that you have um, for this field. And, um, and and just like any any other interview day um, or, or, you know, for those of us that have been to a job interview yeah. or, or any sort of interview, it's, 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 it's the same with our clinical psychology interview day, as Jessica highlighted. It's about uh, being yourself. Uh, that's what the faculty want to want to see. They want to get to know. It's one thing to to look uh, on paper and see how well you write to see your resume which we all obviously all ask for um but but it's also it's, it's crucial on to seeing how you are in person um uh, in your appearance and, and the reasoning behind why did you pick nsu you know why clinical psychology uh e etc so um it's 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 i'm just kind of piggybacking off what jessica uh, was was beginning with but it, it, yes it is about being yourself um, and, and when we say come prepared, that means, you know, rest up because it is going to be a long day. Uh, it, it is a long day uh, meeting with people and just essentially getting a lot of information as well. Uh, but um, but we do want you to to rest up and and be ready to, to meet a lot of great faculty. Wonderful questions. I actually. Um participated in interview day this past year, so I can actually give you a, a, an idea of um, what to expect. Uh, there are going to be some one-on-ones, um, one-on-one with uh, faculty members as well as group interviews with current students that are in the program and faculty members that um, 
our professors over the program. So you will have both of those. As far as uh, copies, documents, transcripts, we have all of that. This isn't really about that information. It's about you. So we want to get to know you. And they'll even give you opportunity to sit with those professors that might have specializations that you do want more information about uh, during uh, lunches too. So there, it's, it's going to be a fun day to make a lot of new acquaintances. Uh, definitely update your LinkedIn so you can meet other students um, and really kind of formulate relationships with them sooner than later because I have seen a lot of them um, that I did see at interview day already formulate those relationships relationships so they can do study groups um, from this past uh, fall start. You're and, most welcome. And kind of jumping back um, to kind of uh, to outcomes, uh, I, I know one of you had a question regarding uh, student outcomes uh, for for particular area. Um, I do invite you to visit our website specifically the College of Psychology website under clinical psychology. And uh, there is a link or, or uh, there, yeah, there is a link available, uh, student admissions outcomes and other data, which will um, essentially kind of, I guess, give you a little bit more explanation on the, our trends over the past few years with our students and, and outcomes after they, uh, they go through the program and of course, uh, confer their degree. So I do invite you to visit our, our website for that, um, for a little bit more information regarding outcomes and, and other data information. Um, Marta asks about uh, how, how long does it take to really know whether or not you've been accepted? To be honest, it really depends on the student. Um, if they know, you know, you've just flying colors, you're definitely gonna know a lot sooner than other students. Um, but I've have had students that were on provisionary, like a, a wait list. Um, so they they liked them, but they liked other students that were just a little bit more um, for them. And if they didn't get enough replies uh, as far as acceptances, then they they give out to those people that were on the waiting list. So it may be you know a month. It could be up until July, um, right before class starts. So uh, it just really depends on where you stand. Are there any final questions for us before we depart? Wonderful question. I have Sierra here. Does NSU require the GRE psychology subject test for admissions? Uh, I love that question. Um, so if you have never done a program in psychology. So if you did not have a bachelor's degree in psychology, um, it is re recommended to take the psychology portion of the GRE. It is not required, however, for students to take it. So if you have a degree in psychology, you don't need to take it. This is just to allow the staff to know that you have a good understanding of what psychology is and what it means and what's kind of like the basis uh, or foundation of psychology and where it's come from um, because that's extremely important because we don't want to go back to square one with these students we want to be able to build upon what you already know so wonderful question well it seems like we've done a wonderful job and there's been a lot of wonderful questions well, this great evening. great questions <laughs> really great questions. I do just want to mention one other thing in case anybody is interested in the school psychology program and you do not have the capability of doing um, nine to four. We do have that specialist program. It is a weekend and uh, evening um, format for you. So if you are interested, you can definitely do that. And in the state of Florida, it is a, um, the Department of Education has um approve the program. So when you complete the specialist program, you are considered a school psychologist. So just to make sure you are aware of that. Uh, as I mentioned before, all of our information is right there on um, the page that you're seeing. We are here for you. Feel free, give us a call, uh, email us, um, and we'll be more than happy to answer any other questions that you may have. We'll just give it a Getting a lot of thank yous. Okay. <laughs> You're most welcome. Well, I hope we were helpful. I hope so too. And <laughs> once again, uh, this presentation is is being recorded. Uh, and, and if you just need refreshers, uh, this information will be shared with you that you can go back 
Uh, but as Jessica highlighted, you're always welcome to, of course, give us a call or email us. Um, and, and we wish you all the best of luck. Understand that we have great programs, doctoral programs within both colleges, Arts, Humanities, Social Sciences, and the College of Psychology. Um, many interests, many unique opportunities, uh, and we definitely hope that you get to not only be a shark, but to experience the NSU edge. And with that, uh, I, I definitely would like to extend a very happy holidays to each and every one of you. Uh, for those of you